Give to Barrett. Cut back over the middle of the 25 to the 20. Breaks a tackle to the 15. Stop, starts 10-5. Touchdown, Lions. Holy mackerel. Throws end zone. It is caught. What a play back there in the back of the end zone by TJ Hawkinson. You're listening to the One Pride Cast. Welcome into the One Pride Cast. Danny Rogers joined by the man, the myth, the legend, special teams coordinator, Dave Fitt. Coach, it's an honor to have you on this podcast. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, no, I'm fired up to be on here. Uh, I think this might be my first podcast, so it's great. But how many interviews have you? It's like an interview. It's like an interview, a conversation. Yeah, live. No, this is kind of maybe more of my style too, just casual conversation. You can wear what you want. <laughs> you don't have to worry about, you know, getting, you know, all spiffed up. And you look great, though. I, I'll say that, Coach. You look yeah, great. Yeah, because uh, what I wear is so important to it me. Is. I'm sure you guys can tell I wear the same thing at every press conference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our intern PJ is cracking up. He knows. Um, coach, you kind of like expressed starting your own podcast. I think that was correct. Mm-hmm. Can we? Yeah, well, yeah no, I've, you know, I mean, just to keep the theme going, I've, mm-hmm. I've talked about during the course of the year, I talked about all the things I want to do when I can't coach football anymore. Yep. I want to coach football as long as I can. I love mm-hmm. the game. I love coaching. It uh, means everything to me. Um, but I occasionally, probably like all coaches do, like if I wasn't doing this, what would I be doing? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and so that goes back to that media conference where I was talking about the statistics websites and mm-hmm. stuff like that, just things that I think could be done better. Um, but then I also think about, well, and another coach, a friend of mine who's with a different team in this league, uh, we always joke around about having our own podcast. Mm-hmm. And we'll ask all these crazy questions. We can bring in all these coaches, all these ex-players, you know, and talk about all this stuff. But we could slant it towards the way we want it slanted yep. rather than the way the media and everybody else from the outside mm-hmm. slants things. And I think a lot of us have a lot of opinions, but we don't share all of those opinions all the time. You so probably shouldn't, right? <laughs> right. Okay. So this would be our opportunity to do that. So I'm looking forward to the Dave Fit podcast in 20 years? Yeah. You got another 20 yeah. years in you, Coach? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, I, Tom Brady, I mean. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, 20 years between college coaching, NFL coaching. I must know. What's your favorite? college or NFL oh yeah um so it's weird how that all happened because Mm -hmm. when I started coaching I absolutely loved college football it was the pageantry it was the band I mean one of my favorite things was just hearing the band play um and there was nothing I loved more in college Mm -hmm. football I was totally disinterested in the National Football League yeah you have to love college football like that with the hours the yeah. recruiting you yeah. have to love it beyond yeah. measure though that makes sense yeah so it was I mean I, I loved it uh, I knew when I graduated from college that I wanted to coach mm-hmm. um, I was fortunate I had this, a great high school coach who really is the guy who first started me thinking along those lines and then mm-hmm. I went to college and and uh, played at the University of Arizona and it was like there was no question that's what I wanted to do mm-hmm. so as soon as I graduated I jumped in I was coaching college football I absolutely loved it um, moved around a bunch of different places throughout the country. It was a great experience. Um, most of it was like small college football, yep. which really for me was mm-hmm. the best thing that ever happened to me. I mean, I tell guys all the time, you know, I used to paint the lines on the field and then, you know, play the game on the field. And then after the game was over, I was a defensive coordinator at the time and I was coming back in and I was editing all the film, you know. Wow. Um, and it was, but in hindsight, it was like, it was just so good for me because it really made me value um, all the things that I have today. You know, mm-hmm. the support staff that we have, the people who do all these other jobs that now I no longer have to do. And uh, I, I would just say that it put everything in great perspective for me. Mm-hmm. Um, not to avoid your question, but to get back to that. Mm-hmm. So the college or NFL. So what happened to me, I was at San Jose State. I was coaching in 2007 yep. was my last year there and uh, so it goes to 2008 and I got an opportunity to uh, to uh, join the San Francisco 49ers mm-hmm. as the assistant special teams coach and I started thinking about it and I was like you know what uh, I mean th- these opportunities don't come around often I could always go back to college football yeah. like maybe I should just try it out and see how it is and uh, so I ended up heading to the 49ers, and it was incredible. I, I worked for underneath 
well, a couple people that I'm appreciative. Mike Nolan gave me my first chance. He was a head coach. Okay. And then, uh, but the special teams coordinator was a guy by the name of Al Everest. Okay. And uh, he's just one of the most unique, best coaches I've ever been around. Mm -hmm. And he came out of just a great time in my coaching career in life. Um, and one of the best things he was, was a teacher. And yeah. he had a, an educational background. So mm -hmm. he had a PhD in education. He had taught all over the world. He had taught at the American schools in Mexico City. He had taught in uh, Italy. And so he just had this really unique perspective. Mm -hmm. And so being around him like really changed my career and changed how I mm -hmm. thought about teaching and coaching. And uh, it, I spent really, what well, I think I was with him for two years and mm -hmm. I just spent two years underneath him just listening, learning, watching, observing. So I'd gone from being the defensive coordinator to running all those meetings and doing all those things. And now all of a sudden I was an assistant and it was just perfect because it was like, okay, I've already done these things. When you're young, you're energetic, you want to, you know, you want to run everything and do everything. And now it gave me a chance to step back and really yep. just learn. Mm -hmm. um, so that was great for me. I used that chance to learn. And as I got into the National Football League, it was like, man, this is unbelievable. I love it. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, I love the National Football League. It's been great for my family and I, mm -hmm. and really it's it's a little bit better from a family standpoint, which is probably the biggest selling point for me. Um, I got three kids, they're all mm -hmm. wonderful. It's been great being around them. A little bit more time with them in the off season. Yep. And then my wife is incredible. Mm -hmm. um, so anyways, being with them and having more time with them in the off season is Huge. outstanding. Yeah. I love that. How old are the kids? Yeah, so we have a senior in high school. I can't believe that. She's 17. And then we got a freshman in high school, and she's uh, just turned 15. And then our son, which is really my wife's baby, yeah. um, is 12-year-old. Yeah, he yeah. gets a little coddled. You know, we of call course. him mom's little boy. But <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, so they're great. And uh, they really enjoyed moving to Michigan, and, and they've handled that well. It's tough for kids. You know, yeah. they got to bounce around a little bit. But uh, mm -hmm. So they've been great, uh, and we've, we've really been thrilled with uh, the opportunity we have here and being here in Detroit, mm -hmm. and it's been great. So they're mainly Philly kids. That's where they spent the majority. Yeah, they spent, <clears throat> they really are Philly kids. Yeah. Um, it's hard for me to say that because I grew up on the West Coast, right? you know, so it's like, oh, no, are we Philly East Coast kids? kids? Yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, but yeah, no, the, uh, it's crazy because I'm really proud of them and the way they handled uh, the transition mm -hmm. because, you know, our oldest started elementary school in outside of Philly in New Jersey. Yep. And she went all the way up until through her junior year. And then she had to move, you Go know, final year. going into her yeah. senior year. Um, but I'm proud of all three of them. They really handled it well. Mm -hmm. I think they've, you know, uh, it wasn't always easy for them, but I think they've looked at it in the right way and decided that, hey, you know, this is going to be an opportunity to mm -hmm. make me a little bit better and go through something that's a little uncomfortable. Right. And uh, they've kind of bounced back. And now, you know, I look mm -hmm. at them, the oldest one, man, she's, you know, just got a lot of confidence right now. Mm -hmm. And so it's just good to see. Does she, does she know where she's going to school at next year? Yeah, that's this is a, the time for that. It is. And that's a great question because it does. She, it is does she gonna relate be a wildcat? to football. No, she, I don't think she's gonna be. It started off as okay. a wildcat. That, that was like number one a couple of years ago, and then uh, I'll just say this: her what she's really looking for is big school, mm -hmm. big football. Okay. And so, like I said, well, yeah, Arizona. And she said, it's not big enough. <laughs> I know. It, it doesn't get much bigger yeah. than Arizona. Yeah, right. No, I didn't think it did, okay. but it's a shot to the heart for sure. I mean, she she could get in-state tuition to Michigan. Yeah, so she's all SEC schools right now. <sighs> and then she wants big parties, too. <laughs> oh, okay. Say less. That's all you need to say. Right. She wanted the party scene. Yeah. Um, okay, so she's probably going to go go down south. So, yeah, okay. looking south, it might be Alabama. Being in the state of Alabama right now, yeah, Roll we'll find tide. out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I was at the University of Arizona. I know we, we touched base on this before, Coach. Um, so going back to your time as a Wildcat, which phase of Wildcat football were you a part of? Because I know you have, there was the Ricky Hunley days, that defensive line, um, and then you have the Gronk days. Um, so which phase were you a part of? Yeah, so I was a fa or I was a part of uh, the Desert Swarm era. Yes. Um, so we were really good on defense. Mm -hmm. um, we had some incredible players, incredible coaches, mm -hmm. uh, and some really good teams. Um, but yeah, it was. Uh, 
called the desert swarm for kind of the way the guys played on defense and yep. how they rallied to the football. And I, I have a hard time saying I was totally a part of that. One of the players that's probably the most well-known is like guys like Teddy, Teddy Bruschi, um, who was a teammate. And then, you know, actually the special teams coach for the Jets, who's here this week in Mobile, uh -huh. his name's Brant Boyer, and he, we played together. I love that. Um, so he was a part of that. We had a bunch of really good players. Um, so I kind of came in as a freshman when these guys were sophomores, juniors, okay. um, and this tradition was kind of al already established there. But yeah, I was definitely fortunate to be a part of that. Um, I was fortunate to be a part around some really good leaders as mm -hmm. players, um, like guys like Teddy Bruschi. And, uh, and I mean, I just had the best experience of my life. I mean, I came as a walk-on mm -hmm. and my dream, my first dream was just to step on the field, you know, and yeah. just to be a part of the program to practice, you know, mm -hmm. it wasn't even a step on the game field, it was just a practice field and just have a chance to be a part of it all was really a dream come true for me and uh so that was incredible and then I ended up I, I redshirted my first year and then the second year I ended up starting on special teams and my first two years playing I played you know on special teams and played a lot and had some success and in my last two years I was fortunate I was able to start in the secondary I was a safety mm -hmm. and and I got to play there, but really just had the, I mean, the time of my life, I mean, I, I was really in heaven the whole time. I mean, there, I would yep. look around and there's guys on scholarship and they're complaining and this and that. I mean, I, I didn't have anything to complain about. Right. Gosh, I love that. Did, so did you miss Chuck Cecil? Yeah, well, that's another great name, mm -hmm. Chuck. So Chuck, I did miss Chuck in college, but uh, my high school coach had coached Chuck Cecil. Okay. So I grew up idolizing Chuck Cecil. Yeah. I mean, I, I was on staff with him for what, five months? utter insanity he is in, as insane as he was when he was playing he's a little more <laughs> mellow now but just looking at his tape was unreal the blood going down his face in some of those pictures yeah I, I Arizona's lucky to have him I know that yeah no doubt about that he, he's an incredible person um, and he's really obviously changed a lot throughout his career and his mm -hmm. life and really matured in a lot of ways which really proud of him for the, all that too you know yeah. but I mean, he was an idol for me. I, I got a picture autographed by him. I mean, it was hanging in my room, mm -hmm. in both in high school and then in college. You know, I got to meet him and have since got to know him pretty good. Yeah. Um, but I was fortunate my high school coach had a stretch there where I think he had coached. The starting safety at the University of Arizona was one of his players for, I think it was like a 20-year stretch. Oh, wow. um, in a row, I think it was. It was like Alan Durden, Chuck Cecil, uh, Let's see, uh, Brandon, oh, Jeff Hammerschmidt, Brandon mm -hmm. Sanders, myself. Brandon and then, Sanders, shout out to Sandman. Yeah, B Mac. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then uh, there was a guy who followed me, Jarvie Worcester. Wow. So, yeah. That's, that's a lineup. I mean, what do you think of Arizona having, I believe they are now, they now have the number one recruiting class in the Pac 12. I think they won one game last year. Yeah, the record's a little bit tough, but I feel like Jed Fish has got these guys going, yep. and they brought in obviously a bunch of ex-Wildcats. Yep. Uh, I think Ricky Hundley's Ricky's over there on now. There. Cecil's Chuck on there. And, Sanders yeah, is now Brandon. high school. Yeah. Yeah. So they brought back a bunch of those guys, and all the people that I've talked to in Tucson, you know, are really excited about the direction they're headed and what mm -hmm. they're doing. So I think the future will be bright for those guys. They just got to hang in there and keep fighting. I think so too. I think I think they're going to be great. A uh, special place in my heart for the Wildcats. Um, okay, we're here at the Reese's Senior Bowl. Coach, you're taking a little more of an advisory role. You look bored. That's why we asked you to come on this <laughs> podcast because your guys are, are doing a lot of the legwork, especially Jet Mockins, um, who told me last night he developed the entire special teams game plan. So um, you've also got the legendary GOAT, Don Mulebach, helping out as well. I overheard him say, guys, I'm just an intern. Tell me where to go. <laughs> I love hearing that from him. Um, so to have those two in these big roles, what does that allow you to do the rest of the week um, in terms of scouting talent? Yeah, no, it's been great. I, I think the first thing, I mean, I'd say, you know, it's it's well done by the Senior Bowl and Dan and all these guys that let these guys do that. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a tremendous opportunity for them. I mean, I, I wish that I had had that chance, you know, uh, mm -hmm. when I was in that position. And really, for me, it's been great. Uh, it's been great because it's a chance to let Jet, you know, step out there and do it his own way and, and you know, go through it. I think, I think really the best way most people learn is by doing, you yep. know, and trying things out, making mistakes and improving. You know, it's really mm -hmm. the way that, you know, for me that I still do it, you know, yeah. and, 
and there's something you can learn from everything you do. So it's a great opportunity for those guys, and it's fun for me to watch them, you know. And it also helps me because I get a chance to watch Jet in these meetings and stuff. And sometimes we'll all have him meet with a group of players mm -hmm. separately throughout the throughout the season. And it helps me better understand, you know, how he's doing it, yeah. what, what's going on. It gives me a chance to kind of help him out too a little bit and mm -hmm. help him develop, um, which he's done a great job mm -hmm. of for us uh, all last year. His name doesn't get mentioned enough. Yeah. Um, but then it also does, to your point of evaluation, it, it allows me to sit in the back of the room and pay attention to all the guys mm -hmm. who are in there and just to watch and see, you know, are they taking notes? Do they pay attention? You know, do they look bored? Do they have an energy and an interest level? Mm -hmm. um, and all things you really don't get to see in the normal process right. throughout the course of a given year. Um, so that's been good. And then uh, you get a chance to see, like, just with being here with these guys for the week, you get a chance to give some guys some coaching or some teaching points and see can they apply those out mm -hmm. on the field where you really don't get a chance to do that. You know, you can ask a guy, do you understand this? And he can draw it on the board and all those things. But now you're giving a guy direction, and then can he follow that direction and put that in action? And there's some guys who can, and there's some guys who can't. Mm -hmm. Usually the best players do a great job of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so it gives you a unique, per a unique perspective mm -hmm. um, just with that whole aspect also. In terms of the, the depth that you have to scout. I mean, we were talking to Toledo safety Tyson Anderson the other night. His big emphasis was he needs to prove himself on special teams. So that makes me think, how how many different position groups do you need to keep your eye on in terms of scouting potential special teams talent? Yes, uh, that, that's a great question too. I say, you know, there's there's sometimes where guys will come in my office and say, well, you know, it's an offensive lineman, you don't have to worry about that. But the guy plays on field goal for us too, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, no, I do need to worry about yep. that, you know? Uh, all special these guys teams matters role. too. Yeah, it does. Um, so anyway, uh, it's really most of them. The quarterbacks are the guys that we work with the least, okay. but some of those quarterbacks are backup holders for us on a game or something. So there's even a small role for them. Right. Um, I would say, you know, uh, just realistically, the quarterbacks, not nearly as much for us. Mm -hmm. The offensive linemen, not nearly as much. The def interior defensive linemen, not nearly as much. Right. But everyone thereafter is really integral to what we do on special teams. Right. Are you overwhelmed at all in terms of how many guys are here? And, and did you get a chance to look at the Jets team as well? Yeah, so I would say overwhelmed, no. Okay. Um, it's actually, the roster is smaller than I thought, um, yeah. which helps me. I'm not great with all these names and mm -hmm. all these new players. It takes me some time. Um, but uh, anyway, so I, no, that's been that's been great. You actually get mm -hmm. to know them fairly fast, and it helps because you're with them in the meeting and you're with them out there mm -hmm. on the field, and so it's not like just one evaluation. Yeah. Um, I have not gotten a chance to watch the Jets uh, squad that much, mm -hmm. but the Senior Bowl does do a really good thing. Uh, I think it's Friday evening. Yeah. We're actually going to flip teams, and so we get a little bit of time with the other teams so that we can just kind of interview and talk to and work That's with huge. those players there. So yeah. it's obviously great. Yeah. Wow, that is huge. Yeah. Okay, last but not least, um, I, I was entertained thoroughly throughout this entire season with the special teams trick plays, the trickery. Um, it was awesome. It was, it was just awesome to see. Uh, we can't do, you can't do a lot of that here. So what are you allowed to do in terms of trick plays? Yeah, at, at, in the Senior Bowl you're talking yes. about. Yeah. So uh, here the regulations are tight, which is good, because okay. really what you're trying to do is just evaluate these guys as players mm -hmm. and see them do their stuff. Um, but you need to know if a punter can throw a 27-yard pass, right? Yeah, so you do need to know that. Okay. So we can get these guys to throw the ball on the side mm -hmm. and kind of get an idea for what their uh, talent looks like that way. With the kickers, you get a chance to see some of their onside kicks and mm -hmm. if they have some of those things that you like. Um but then, uh, in general, I think with the uh, like fakes in the in the game, you're really not allowed to run any pump fakes. Okay. Um, there's a lot of regulations on what you can and can't do. You're really not allowed to bring a hard rush. Oh. So it's really more of a hold up and return. Okay. But that's good for us because now we get a chance to see can this guy hold up a guy one on one. So there's a lot of one on one matchups mm -hmm. out on the field, which is really a big part of this game in yep. the National Football League is just mm -hmm. winning one on ones. And uh, so we get to see a lot of one on one matchups out there. We're, we're not trying to block a punt, get a punter hurt, trying yep. to block a field goal, get a guy hurt. Mm -hmm. um, you don't really want to just work on fakes all week and trying to fend. To, 
to defend that, you yeah. know. Um, yep. So it's really more about just playing these normal plays and evaluating talent. Um, so the rules really help that way. I think on kickoff return, you may be able to, you know, do some things. Okay. And be a little bit more creative there. Um, and then kickoff, not so much. Mm-hmm. Just kind of kick the ball down the field. And then really for the kickoff, kickoff return, there's, there's one kickoff in the game and there's one kickoff return in the game. That's it. Okay. So we just got one shot at Why it. Why not? Got to oh, make them count. Gosh, pressure <laughs> is on. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. No, I guess we'll just wait till next season to see some more trickery from the Lions. Yeah, it sounds good. I know this. Uh, it's Coach Campbell's favorite part, and he's it a has huge to be. part of all those things. So it's great. With how amped he gets when the, when it happens and it's executed flawlessly, like it's been pretty pretty dang consistently. Yeah, that's the best. All right, I am looking so forward to honestly, Coach Jet's game plan and see just how the special teams unit comes together. And then we will definitely look forward to the Dave Fit podcast here in the, in the near future. Coach. Yeah, right. Sounds mm-hmm. great. I really appreciate you asking me to do this in your time. We are almost wrapping up this week from the Reese's Senior Bowl down in Mobile, Alabama. Hope you enjoyed my conversation with special teams coordinator Dave Fit. More content coming your way. Stay tuned to the One Pridecast. <laughs>